Georgia is the best team in college football 25. But what if they lost every single game for the next three years straight? I want to rebuild a powerhouse, and this is the only way I can think of to make it fair. So after three winless seasons of Bulldogs football, we're going to take over as head coach to see if we can bring Georgia back to the national championship. Let's begin. In the last 20 years, Georgia has only had one losing season, and that was in 2010. And for the year 2024, 2025, and 2026, they're gonna be 0-12. We start out ranked number one in the nation. We're a five-star program with absolute God Squad players at every single position. I have no idea what this roster is gonna look like three years from now. Let's find out. Now, unfortunately, you cannot actually force wins against the auto-generated teams like FCS Southeast. So we may be one and 11, but you get the idea. This is the Georgia effect. We went one and 11. We're a four and a half star program, but we're a 94 overall. So everybody progressed really well, despite us being horrible. The roster is still unbelievably good. All right, season two, we were so bad, we got fired and hired by the Pittsburgh Panthers. So let's get back on Georgia. Georgia's officially now a four star program. They went one and 11 in 2024, one and 11 in 2025, and we'll take over for one more one and 11 season. <laughs> we lost 42 to zero in the Texas. <laughs> we lost 49 to 16 to Charlotte. Oh, this is so weird. It's actually insane that the overall can keep going up despite going one and 11. I might have to go more winless seasons for this to be fair. Georgia Tech is now ranked sixth in the nation. Dude, what is going on? Our coach prestige is D plus. We went one and 11 for the third straight year. We're a 96 overall. Is it not possible to tank this program? How do we still have recruits? Also, somehow we're a 96 overall despite not having a single player on this team higher than a 95. We're certainly getting worse across the board. Gentlemen, the year is 2027. The Georgia Bulldogs wants a 96 overall. Still a four-star program, but down to a 77. We are ranked alongside the likes of Northern Illinois, Baylor, North Texas, Kansas, Purdue, and San Diego State. Some notable programs that are better than us are Toledo, BYU, and Southern Miss. This is the only way to rebuild Georgia, and I'm here for it. Why don't we start out by looking at our roster? I have no idea who we have or what we can work with. Here. I will say our junior redshirt quarterback is a stud. Jaden Rashada. He's got platinum tier step up. He's a 91 overall. We actually are going to start out with a very, very good quarterback. We'll get this year and next year with him. The best player on this team is Andre Evans, a 99 speed, 99 excel junior. So two years out of these guys is awesome. A few stud senior D tackles. And I'm hoping we have some depth at the quarterback position. Not really. We've got two fast scrambler freshmen and another redshirt junior. After Rashad is out of here, it's, it's going to get a little scary. So we still have like small remnants of Georgia football, but not a lot. We got a freshman 92 speed running back who's a 60. Oh my God. Once these juniors are out of here, we're so screwed. We got two speed demon junior wide receivers. Nitro Tuggle with platinum tier layout is going to get so scary so fast. Horrendous tight ends. Although a few guys with some speed on them, both freshmen. It's so weird. Dude, Georgia's starting left guard is a 57 overall freshman. Hello. I mean, naturally, we couldn't land any recruits because we were one of the worst programs in college football. Oh my God, my left outside linebacker is a 55 overall. Keelan Fadanukin. Buddy, you are the first Indian in all of college football, I think. And you are starting this season in the SEC for Georgia. We still got really good middle linebackers though, so that's exciting. Platinum tier robber. That's racist. <laughs> Our free safety is a dog. Oh no, that's Andre Evans. Oh shoot, it's Andre? Oh no. I have the wrong thing. Sorry, that's corners. Corners are good. Free safeties are okay. Safeties are 53 overall. Mitch Robbins. Here we go, gentlemen. Yeah, the rebuild begins. Oh, this is gonna be so ugly. Now, there is one kind of saving grace here. We are still Georgia. No matter how bad we are, we are still Georgia. And that means that for things like athletic facilities, brand exposure, playing time, pro potential, program tradition, stadium atmosphere, we still have crazy good grades, which is something that you can't even improve on a lot of teams. Now, championship contender, coach stability, coach prestige, we can get those up too. So at the end of the day, I don't think recruiting is going to be that bad for us. I mean, we can still target really, really good four-star players. We just have such little talent and we'll be taking on the entire SEC. So we'll be playing incredible teams the whole time. I think these first three years are going to be really difficult until some of these recruits start to develop and we can get back to Georgia football. Now, the schedule for this season, we got Louisville, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Florida, 
Okay, wow, as far as the SEC is concerned, this is one of the easiest schedules we're gonna get. That's awesome. I'm sure the good teams really don't wanna play us because <laughs> we suck. We are so useless on TV right now. We have no TV games and we're Georgia. Oh my God. It is so weird seeing Georgia Bulldogs and then that overall and then all the D pluses. That just doesn't look right. It has been three years, over a thousand days since the Georgia Bulldogs have won their season opener. And for this season opener, we're on the road against the Seminoles who have a 10 overall advantage on us. Let's see how this goes. I'm honestly shocked that anybody is still on Georgia. I mean, imagine playing football your whole high school career. You finally get recruited to Georgia. You're so excited. And that program continues to go wild. One in 11. I will say you can't buy loyalty, gentlemen, especially not in college football. But for the boys that stuck with this program, I have good news. 10 years from now, you, you might win a national championship. You'll be telling your grandkids how you stuck it out with the Bulldogs. It is still zero to zero. Georgia strikes first. Florida State's on the board. Georgia 10 to three, 10 to 10, 17 to 10, 17, 17. No way we can win this game. 24 to 27 at the end of the third quarter. Tell me this is winnable. We're actually playing pretty good. 24 to 27. It's our football. Ball, third and four. Can we convert? Oh, wait, that was actually a touchdown. It's just like road to glory. They never lob it. Fourth and four. We're gonna punt it away. I wanna see a little more aggressive. Oh, look at the gunner though. Great coverage. Wait a minute, gentlemen. Wait just a minute. After a stop, Georgia. 77 overall Georgia could technically good. Oh, it's dropped. Third and 10, down by three to the Seminoles. Come on, Georgia. Come on, Georgia. Fourth and 10, do you go for this? Oh my God, you do, you do go for this. Come on, Georgia, you haven't won a game in so long. That's, that's why, that's why you haven't won a game in so long. We burnt all three timeouts. We stopped Florida State one final time. And now we're checking it down with no timeouts and the clock running. We don't des we deserve to go one and 11 again, gentlemen. If we're gonna play like this, third and five, convert something. We actually have a dog court. Don't look at the sideline, snap the ball. We just need field goal range. Rashada. Oh my, you used 14 seconds to do that. Fourth and five, what do you got? Fourth and five. Okay, like, what are we doing though? I get it's a first, you don't have any clock. You're gonna, you're gonna spike it and go Hail Mary. You guys are insane. You know, I mean, frankly, we're on our like fourth head coach in four years. I can understand why there's a little bit of chemistry issues. And there's only one team I've ever seen pull off the Hail Mary. That's the old Dominion Monarchs. I don't know if George has got it in him, but that's actually a really good ball for it. DPI. Tell me that's a DPI right now. We're gonna kick it. <laughs> we still got that Georgia money. Wait, oh, it's college. It's college football. It's not the pros. It's not from the point of the foul. It's a 15 yarder. Oh, at least we get one more shot and we're gonna fucking get us out. Get us out. Dude, I'm sitting here thinking this is the NFL where a DPI spots you where the penalty occurred. This is college football. It's a 15 yard penalty. Oh my God, we just. We almost beat them though. That's a good sign, I guess. All right, rough start, but we can pick it up. The rest of our first legitimate season wasn't so bad for Georgia. We finished five and seven, scooping up a win against Georgia Tech, losing to LSU, losing to Missouri, beating a ranked Florida team, but losing to pretty much every other contending team, finding our wins against Vanderbilt, Louisville, and Kennesaw State. And I wouldn't exactly call them impressive wins, but we're five and seven. That's the best we've been in four years. And I've been fired. Shit. Honestly, crazy fire because we haven't even won more than a single game in four years. I finally got us five wins. You're going to fire me. Looks like we're on to our fourth coach. Notably, though, I did land some solid recruits. We got a four-star, Alani Cummings. We got Demario Coco, Timote Savoy, Steve McLean. Mainly, I was trying to fill those holes in the defense that had 55 overall freshmen, like linebackers, safeties, corners. So we landed a lot of those guys. Got this physical athlete who's 6'5", Ray Colombo. And uh, that's really all I could do in the recruiting game. It was not easy in these streets, but we're on the upward trajectory for the first time. You gotta love how I get fired by Georgia because we went five and seven. So naturally somehow I got hired by number one ranked Oregon who just won the national championship. <laughs> what is this? All right, Ken Miranda, is, uh, it was a miracle run for you, buddy. We're back on Georgia as Neil Hobbs. Our season opener is at home against the FCS East. We may break the streak right now in 2028. Let's take a look at this roster. Justin Williams. 
Clemson 92, Rashada coming into his senior year. He's got five abilities. He's a 90 overall. Quintavious Johnson, outside linebacker with 98 speed. Where did you come from? Must have had a spectacular offseason. Nitro Tuggle in his senior season. We're about to lose like all of our super legitimate talent. That is the scary part here. But redshirting Kerry Elias, 93 speed, 89 excel, 75 overall. He will be able to step into a nice little role here. And the now sophomore Emmanuel Hawkins is getting a little bit better. We're at 84 overall. These overalls are just throwing my head for a loop, but it's, I mean, I guess it's working. And Demario Coco, who we recruited, is a 78 overall as a freshman. He's gonna be really good. Alani Cummings is a 75 overall with 95 speed. He's gonna be nasty. Literally all of our free safeties are freshmen too. All right, 84 overall is a lot better than 77 last season. Maybe we could just not get fired. That's my real goal. Don't get fired. Could be elite for us. As far as recruiting goes, I kind of want to sign like a really, really good quarterback. We're looking at this five-star who's first choice school right now is Georgia. That's Jaron Bugs, a five-star scrambler. He's a busted gem. Shoot, he's so interested in us. I was hoping he'd be a stud, but he's kind of slow for a scrambler. Still a good quarterback, but not as good as I was hoping. There is Sammy Carney, though, four-star field general. I feel like field general makes more sense for Georgia than scrambler does anyway. Keep our eyes on these guys this season. Let's go win our first season opener. We have a significant overall advantage. I mean, duh, they're the astronauts. Is this going to be an impressive win? No, but I'm excited to see it. Can we give a huge round of applause to the Georgia fans who relentlessly pack the stadium no matter how bad we are? Look at this. Every single seat is filled with a Bulldog fan. I see a few astronaut fans in there, but mainly it's Georgia Bulldogs. I kind of thought it'd be funny. I always wondered if you were a big program, but you were horrible, would they still pack the stands? The answer is yes. We had four seasons of 1-11, and 11, and they're still showing out. I am going to play a few moments here. We've got some insanely fast linebackers. I want to give them a go. It's third and 10, and that halfback is open, and so is that DB. Don't manually dot me up. That's not cool. Astronauts in empty trips, except there's a running back next to them. What is this formation? Oh, he's so bad. Let's go, Georgia. We got to stop. I'll play a little bit on offense, too. It's third and four. Here's our sophomore running back, Emmanuel Hawkins, looking to pick up this first down. And that is not how that should be blocked. That's turnover. Luckily, we got one more shot at offense. I do have some speed demon wide receivers, but I don't have a Georgia O-line. Dude, the astronauts are whooping me right now. This is crazy. I don't like how this feels. It is still third and one. I gotta believe in the run game for a single yard on Georgia, right? Come on, Hawkins. We just gotta hold him. We just gotta hold him. All right, third and 10. Big conversion. It ain't over. Oh my God, you're fast. You are so <laughs> Throw the whole team away. How on earth? And seven is it? We can barely beat the astronauts. I can't believe what I'm watching. I'm going to Abbott. I finally make a catch. If you're playing as Georgia and you got to manually step in to beat the astronauts, you definitely made a mistake somewhere in your life. Fourth and seven, that's a turnover. Luckily, my defense is unstoppable against the astronauts right now. It's 17 to zero. This is a pitiful home win, but oh my goodness, gentlemen. I think we're gonna win a game at home. Second and four, Georgia's looking to run the clock out. We go read option, completely bagged. Nice defense. We just got stuffed. We're gonna have to punt this. Oh no, we got a field goal. Okay, make it 20 to zero, I guess. I mean, it's ugly. Like we don't expect this out of Georgia, but we did shut them out. We did score 20 points. I hope you bet the under. Georgia has won their first game of the season for the very first time in four years. Oh my goodness. Excuse me, Georgia Bulldogs. We went eight and five. Look what one win can do you, gentlemen. Although we're four and four in the SEC, so we lost most of our games to the good teams. And I'd be willing to bet we just beat, you know, the Georgia Tech and the Vanderbilts. At least I didn't lose my job, though. Let's see how uh, our seniors did, because we are about to lose a lot of our best players. Jaden Rashada, honestly, had a very impressive season. 3,400 yards, 30 touchdowns, four interceptions. Super good. Now, our sophomore, Hawkins, this is a not-so-spectacular year. 564 and two on two fumbles. Nothing impressive. Sokovi White, he is a senior. And Darian Pettis, the freshman, did great. Uh, Nitro Tuggle, actually, our wide receiver won. Our senior was kind of ineffective. This probably lends to whatever Georgia's playbook uses. Looks like they probably use, I assume, their slot wide receiver a lot, but that's good reps for Darian Pettis. Stephen Abbott had actually a really good season. He's an 80 overall as a sophomore. Defensively, I'm so sad that we're losing Quintavious Johnson. 98 speed outside linebacker. Oh, he's so good. And four interceptions for our junior corner. That's good. Now, I hate to say now the rebuild starts because we should be rebuilding the entire time, but I think this is our most crucial year. So we just lost some of our absolute best players. We're sitting at an 85 overall with the four and a half 
half star program. And this is why I say it's such a big year, deciding who our quarterback is gonna be for the next four years. Now there's Eric Reinhardt, a field general freshman. I could redshirt him this year. And then his first technical year could be next year. I like field general with what Georgia runs. His accuracies are already nasty. I think it will take five years to win a national championship. I think we redshirt him. Start one of these scramblers. Yeah, let's do it. I'm gonna start Kerry Elias and I'm gonna redshirt Eric Reinhardt. And the next season, Eric Reinhardt can be the starter. Holy shit. This is the first player I've ever recruited who legitimately has the elite dev trait. I've seen star a lot of times. I've never seen elite. Now, always, always make sure you go over to ratings and check their ceiling. Because for certain players, it'll just be grayed out and their ceiling just won't be that high. Eric Reinhardt could have 99 speed, 99 acceleration, and 99 in every single accuracy. This guy could be an absolute god. We just have to make sure that he doesn't leave in the offseason. So I'm going to redshirt him. We got to play well this season, but at the start of next season, we're going to have one of the fastest developing and probably an 80 overall quarterback. Jesus, this guy's a beast. Oh my god, he's a freak. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. So Kerry Elias, right? His elusiveness is capped here. His accuracy is capped pretty low. So he'll be nice for us this year, but obviously his ceiling is nowhere near as high as Reinhardt. Let's make that adjustment right now. Okay, so in the depth chart, we got to stick Kerry Elias as the starting quarterback. At halfback, I think Emmanuel Hawkins is still probably the right call because all of our halfbacks are very similar. I don't care if Woodall is starting this year or whenever. Hawkins is just fine. Ray Colombo, freshman red shirt. He'll be a senior when Reinhardt's a junior. He's 95 speed. I'll keep wide receivers where they are too. Then Stephen Abbott. That is a bummer. Stephen Abbott's been really good. He's just a junior, so we're gonna lose him. I should probably recruit a tight end for Reinhardt. Offensive line has been developing. Honestly, this is just the Georgia effect. The fact that we can just kind of get better so easily is crazy. Defensive line looks okay. Linebackers looking so much better. Demario Coco already a starter now as a sophomore. We have a lot of freshmen and sophomores starting right now. A ton. We're a very young team. Free safeties look good. All right, every position looks uh, so much better than two years ago. Let's make sure we set a red shirt on Reinhardt and we will be good. I might as well red shirt Daryl Big Hill as well, just in case for some reason we can't retain Reinhardt, but we should be able to retain him. Schedule is not an easy one though. We start with Pittsburgh, who's fourth in the nation. Then it's Clemson, Louisville, Texas, Ole Miss, Tennessee, Auburn, Florida, Mississippi State, Alabama. Shit. I think if we go six and six, this would be a great season. And as far as recruits, hopefully I can land some five stars. I honestly love getting athlete wide receivers that are like pretty fast and then just switching their position to tight end. Cause it's really hard to get a fast tight end, but it's not hard. Oh, he's a busted gem. But for example, this dude's 6'4", 216 with 92 speed. Or here we go, Martin Paris. This is a true tight end. He's 6'5". I can't even see his speed from here, but he's 81 XL. He, he might be a better option. Also, I wanna pick up some wide receivers. This guy looks fast. Chad LeCount. We're third in his interest. He's a 99 speed, 5'9 wide receiver. I would love that for Reinhardt. We already did get a verbal commit. We got a four-star athlete who's most likely just a power back. Um, this was like the easiest recruit of my life. That is the one thing we really have in our back pocket. We can recruit players still really well, even though we haven't been the Georgia of the Georgia that people remember. Okay. Okay. Five and seven. Not exactly what I wanted, but it could have been worse. Elias. Yeah. This is kind of what I meant. I, I kind of knew that scrambler QBs are just not built for this offense. And you can see it in the touchdown interception ratio. 27 and 18 is not good. Hawkins had a pretty good season, but this guy's kind of fumble prone. Three fumbles. Soma Fotu had a spectacular season with 13 touchdowns. And defensively, we had six interceptions out of our senior corner, Matthias Isaac. Hakeem Amadi, sophomore free safety with four, though. That's huge. Ooh, that's scary. That's scary. That's scary. Look at players at risk. The number one risk of transfer is Eric Reinhardt. We got to get this dude reps fast. Going five and seven took us from a four and a half star program down to a three and a half half, but our overall is better. So that was actually a really bad season. I didn't expect that to be so bad at five and seven. We're not having any issues landing recruits still though. So that's good. Two, four stars and a three-star wide receiver. We got a four-star Johnny Jeffrey corner. Those are four big signings right there. And this is at the start of the new season. I got to get Reinhardt reps ASAP. All right. So after the red shirt year, I honestly expected Reinhardt to 
progress better in the offseason. Doesn't look like he progressed really at all. Looks like he got a little bit faster. His accuracies are virtually the same. So I guess his points went into quickness, which didn't improve his overall. So headed into this very, very critical season to retain the elite quarterback, Reinhardt, we've got two 89 overall centers. Our third best player is a kicker. Have you ever seen that on Georgia? Jabu Corker. Oh boy, this is gonna be a season. Elias got better though. Sorry, Elias. You should transfer. I would transfer if I was you. Season opener is against Clemson. I'm gonna step in and play the moments on this game. It's actually a fair overall matchup. Their defense is a little bit better, but I wanna make sure that Reinhardt has a nice start to the season. I cannot have this dude transferring. No way. It's a wet field. I think it's, I think it's a light sprinkle out here. Georgia hosting Clemson for the season opener. The first start for Reinhardt and Georgia just lost an entire star after going five and seven. Yikes. All right, gentlemen, I got to give Reinhardt a good first game. So let's play some good football here. First and 10, the opening play. What are we going to get here? Beautiful. You know, we love check downs right now as we're trying to make Reinhardt not transfer. Just kidding. We're going to throw a nuke here. Second and three. You got to try it. That's actually so bad, but it's a little white corner. <laughs> yeah, he's actually uh, he's actually kind of a stud, so I don't know if I'm going to try that again. Third and three. Oh, beautiful. Maybe not. Dude, that same corner. This guy's a dog. Oh, beautiful. Abbott. I love you, Abbott. I think Abbott's going to be my go-to guy. A big body, a tight end, a security net. Although Hawkins looks stupid open. Holy shit. What kind of screaming ass blitz did Clemson just send? Second and 17. Okay, Hawkins just made the catch of a lifetime. I wasn't even commentating because I thought there's no way he comes down with that. Third and four, gotta remember Reinhardt's, Reinhardt's got 82 speed. He can move, oh my God, gentlemen. I get it, we're not the same Georgia. What on earth are we blocking if not the D tackle? And we're going for it on fourth. This does not look good. Putting up a prayer and it's answered. Stephen Abbott, come on now, gentlemen. This pocket is... So scary. Who wants to reach into the route tree and tell me what the hell that is? Good Lord. I don't know how much complaining I can do. Oh, wait a minute. I'm out of the pocket. Step up. Good blocks. Don't fumble. Ryder. I like that. The true freshman showing some grit. Now third and one, looking for a small pickup and we are in a lot of trouble here. Dude, we got mitts though. Even in the rain, we're going no huddle. Clemson doesn't know what's hitting them right now. That's my hope anyway. Right in the middle, this Clemson D-line is Horrifying. But at the same time, I do got to run the football. I can't let him know I'm passing every single time. And what do you know? Whittle will take six yards here. Abbott? Abbott? The post over the middle. What a catch. Hold those blocks, gentlemen. Let me get it off. Hawkins. A lot of room. Good spin. Broken tackle. Emmanuel Hawkins is in. And Reiner in his first start has got a touchdown. Let's go. All right. I gave Reiner the beautiful drive. I got to let Georgia take over. It's 10 to 3. Now 10 to 6. Now 10 to 9. Clemson's putting up field goals like no other. Another touchdown for them. Another touchdown for us. Well, it doesn't look like we'll win this ball game, but hopefully Reiner had a solid one. 31 to 20. Third and 10. What do you got? <laughs> Jesus. That is so depressing to click in and see. Clemson's gonna run this ball out and Georgia's gonna lose the first game of the season. Yikes. 31 to 20. I gotta see these stats. I'm really hoping that was his only interception. Please don't transfer. We love you. Reinhardt, 17 for 32, 211, two touchdowns, two interceptions. I mean, Clemson is a really good team, so I gotta hope that that, that isn't a sign of things to come. Ooh, <laughs> definitely a sign of things to come. Reinhardt is not a risk to transfer. We go nine and four. Still three losses in the SEC, but we're ranked. Yeah, Eric Reinhardt had a really good season. 3,700 yards, 34 touchdowns, 13 interceptions as a true freshman. Completion percentage is not great. 13 interceptions is not great, but I'm not too mad about this. Looks like we kind of did a duo running back thing here. Woodle and Hawkins kind of just split reps. And through the air, Columbo was our number one guy with 10 touchdowns. Von Dalton, number two with 11. We're definitely sharing the wealth pretty much everywhere. Abbott, 576 and two. I love you, Abbott. And defensively, our overalls are honestly really, really solid. Gonna lose some seniors this year, of course, on defense, but I'm chilling. As far as recruiting alongside the transfer portal, was able to land some solid four stars. Mainly some defensive guys. Johnny Jeffrey was the corner we really, really liked, but I couldn't land the 99 speed wide receiver. 
which I am bummed about. You know the rebuild took a while if I'm in two different states recording it. Let's pick up where we left off. We are trying to rebuild Georgia after absolutely tanking for four straight years. And honestly, we're starting to get close. We're back up to a four-star program after dropping to as low as a three-star program. We've got an 87 overall, some stud offensive linemen, an 88 overall starting senior halfback with an awesome junior halfback behind. Players are progressing really, really well. But most importantly, and where I believe we are going to have a ton of success and why we just may be able to do this two years from now, Eric Reinhardt. Now, rarely do I ever find a prospect that actually has the elite development trait. He develops at the fastest rate. He's a four star and his potential is quite literally limitless. If he maxes out accuracy, he'll have 99 in every throwing stat. If he maxes out quickness, he'll have 99 speed and 99 excel. This guy could be so unbelievably good. The only problem is we don't get to determine where a skill points go so we just got to see how he continues to play but he's got at least three more years this year next year and the year after that assuming he stays with georgia now that being said we do want to load him up with really good wide receivers and he's got some good options bo roth and darian pettis are in their senior years but they're both solid overalls and importantly ray colombo a guy that we recruited is 95 speed and he's a junior so we get two good years out of ray colombo six foot five four star athlete um he's virtually maxed out though all he can do is iq and power uh but he's already honestly an absolute dog so hopefully he can get some abilities and we can go from there dante lasco's only a sophomore he's got a decent tight end to throw to and on the defensive side of the ball we have a lot of good players steve mcclain marco tejeda is only a junior and then david okk he's a freshman redshirt freshman 79 overall eric mccormick coming into his final year my linebackers are a little slow and that's concerning but we do have melvin cavazos who's a fast senior linebacker my right outside linebacker jason Rissner is our best option there Corners all look really, really solid. Free safety looks good and strong safety looks good as well. Only thing we got to be certain on is we got to make sure that Reinhardt is the starter because we do have good quarterback options. Kerry Elias, the senior, is technically a little bit better than Reinhardt, but we need Reinhardt getting all the reps that this man can get. The only scary thing would be him transferring. We just have to pray that he doesn't transfer. We have a good season here and we're going to be just fine. I also literally just realized that you can turn coach firing off. I probably should have done that sooner. I could have had the same coach this whole time but um in case anyone was wondering although hopefully at this point now that we're back to a four-star program in 87 overall hopefully we don't drop players like crazy as we already get a four-star outside linebacker commit as well as a four-star guard commit doesn't get much easier than that gentlemen colombo is a risk of transfer and he's one of my favorite wide receivers but luckily reinhardt is no longer a risk of transfer and that's really really good damn our week one game is against ohio state now before we hop into that game i want to show you guys what we're looking at recruiting wise um i do want faster linebackers so i'm really happy that we were able to pick up daryl witt he's an upper echelon tier of speed and 91 excel so that's a great signing for us i do want wide receivers for reinhardt he'll be moving into his junior year when we get these guys so we gotta hope that they're either really really fast or maybe it's not the best pickup but damn oh we gotta get nate cherry nate cherry six foot four deep threat with 97 speed 91 excel he's a gem we gotta throw the house at the boy here nobody else is super notable other than demetrius beal did sign and we're looking at a potential five-star quarterback john bredesen we we can't assume that we're gonna win a natty with reinhardt so we do need a backup option if we can land a five-star qb we'll be just fine honestly for this first game away at ohio state we're an 87 overall there a 91 i'm gonna step in and try and give reinhardt a really really good game i'm gonna rock the black alternates because i think they look sick Let's see what we can do here. We are at Buckeye Stadium. Number 20 ranked Georgia taking on number 15 ranked Ohio State. It's gonna be a good one right here, boys. I'm just gonna play the moments. It's a big first quarter drive. It's zero to zero. And we are not gonna be able to see icons because this is Ohio State. On first and 10, I'm gonna try and scramble out, break a tackle. Fumble the football backwards. I don't know what just happened, but okay. Yeah, Ohio State is not playing around. Second and 19, there's Colombo. Nice work, Reiner. First and 10, we're gonna stay in that same formation. And there's Woodle, our stud running back. Now an 88 overall. Gonna step up with Reiner here. That's another fumble. Two fumbles on this opening drive for Reiner, but we've recovered both. Buckeye Stadium is so unbelievably loud. Tried to check that down. Don't even have time to throw it. It's third and six. They are not playing around. I can't see a single button. I can't see anything. We just got to honestly pray on this. 
There goes Reiner. Takes some yards. He's not our fastest quarterback. He's playing really well right now. Trying to quiet this crowd down. For the first time, we can actually see our icons. Literally the first time all game. Huge catch out of the tight end. Let's go for the first run play of today. We're still Georgia, right? Look at that cutback. God, dude, I was just playing Madden before this. Good Lord, it's so much faster playing college football. First and 10, easy check down to Woodle, and Reiner is playing really good right now. Obviously, the two fumbles are tough. On one drive, too, it's kind of crazy. But we are cooking, and there's Columbo outside release. Takes it down to the three. We could grab a touchdown on this opening drive for Eric Reiner here. Aaron Yeager! There's Woodle! You're not in? Oh my God. I think we'll be able to throw that same thing. We are, we are. That's a tough route to stop. Now that I'm looking at that, I might put that in my bag for online. All right, I gave the boys a touchdown. Let's see if they can close this out. Third and 11, Ohio State looking for a big conversion. Some pass rushes. <gasps> Pick six, maybe, maybe. He's down the sideline. Georgia, pick. Six, Daniel Lombardo. Oh my God, a white corner pick six. That's my Jackie Robinson. Let's go. Georgia is looking dominant right now. Strong lead, but Ohio State scores back to back. It's all tied up. They score again. They score again. We put up three. They put up seven. Ohio State's just a little bit too good for us. Honestly, a very impressive outing and a strong starting lead. But Ohio State puts up 28 points in the second quarter. 14 in the fourth. That's all she wrote. Damn, I really thought we'd get away with that one. Really tough game, but keep in mind, Ohio State is one of the highest overalls in the whole game, and we put up a damn good fight. We're not quite there yet. The week one loss to Ohio State was not a sign of things to come, as Georgia put on a clinic in the next six games. Smacking the FCS West, beating Miami by 10, dominating Vanderbilt, barely beating Texas A&M by a single point, beating Arkansas by 28, dominating South Carolina, who's had a horrendous season, beating number six ranked Oklahoma 24 to 14, and beating Florida. This was an undefeated win streak for a hot second there. Beating Missouri and LSU, looking like we might go undefeated the rest of the season until, guess who? Georgia Tech. Our only loss of the season, other than Ohio State, was to Georgia Tech, who's four and eight. Now, despite this loss, we end eight and zero oh in the SEC. Did not drop a single game in the SEC, leading us to this massive win week where we'll get a rematch against Oklahoma in the SEC championship, meaning we're getting a playoff spot if we can win this game. Right after this game, we can check in on our season stats. Oklahoma's a 90, we're an 89. Should be an awesome game. It is three to zero in this first quarter. I'm gonna step in on third and four, see if I can help the boys out here. I see a little, oh my God. I thought that was gonna be so money. He sat on that so well. Holy shit. Good lord, I got lurked so bad. That was the easiest pick six I've ever seen. Stared that route down though. I wanted short yardage. They knew it, but, but we might get one back right here with Ben Roth. He caught it. Yo. I didn't think he'd come down with that football. And there's Columbo on a post route. He's wide open. Took a hit for it. But just like that, Georgia's got a touchdown as well. All right, let's give defense a hand. Oklahoma is in the red zone first and 10. It's not a run. This is a pass. It's going to throw to the running back. Nice diving tackle. Make this second and six. I'm going to blitz here. If this is a run up the middle, we should be there with Cavazos. It's not. Oh, oh. What? I should have been an easy lurk. I accidentally got switched off to the nearest guy. Back on offense, and I'm seeing Columbo again. 17 to 7. I'm already having so much input here, I kind of feel bad. Wow, that's a monster catch. Tell you what, Georgia can catch the football right now, though. No doubt about that. First and 10. Reinhardt steps up a little bit too far, but doesn't fumble. Second and two. Staying in no huddle. This concept's working really well right now. There's a running back, but we can't get the pass off. Third and two. I'm going inside zone to Woodle. See if we can just grab this first down and a little bit more. Beautiful. I think I got to let the boys finish this one out. First and 10, Columbo just missed. Oh, that's a huge mistake. Second and 10, we're going back to the run. Good looking blocks. Woodle will take third and two. There's Woodle, but that is a fast, he dropped it. We're close enough that we should be going for this. Fourth and two. 
RPO's gonna go absolutely nowhere. Oklahoma is killing us. 10 to 17, now 10 to 20. 23 to 10, 29 to 10. 29, 17, 29, 24. And Oklahoma runs the clock out. Honestly, my input kind of messed us up there. I threw a pick six. I turned the ball over on fourth and two. Javon Big Hill, that's the pick six guy. All right, tough loss here to Oklahoma. I wonder if we still make the playoffs. We are ranked really high, but then we just lost Oklahoma. There's a chance we're still in the playoffs. Yeah, we're 12th in the nation. We should be. Rick Colombo gets SEC Offensive Player of the Week. There was only one SEC game. John Abbott of Clemson is the 2031 Heisman Trophy winner. Dante Lasco, yo, our tight end wins the best tight end award winner. I'm kind of shocked. 80 reception, 764, and six was the best in the entire nation. That doesn't seem that impressive, but I will say, oh no. Okay, I've never won best tight end award, so that's really cool, but we do miss the playoffs, which is a bummer. I was hoping we make it here. Taking on Iowa State in the Texas Bowl. And gentlemen, a big win. We get the Texas Bowl winner. This is our first really dominant season as Georgia, and it's the year 2031. So that's kind of crazy to say out loud. It took us seven years, but I think we're back to where we want to be. Ray Colombo, another awesome game, and he's the guy that I want to progress really well, so that's perfect. Okay, gentlemen, the 2032 season could be a big one. Coming off an 11-3 season, we've got some monsters on this roster right now, but our, okay, the overall is just bugged. I'm sorry, that's not correct. This team is so much better than it was previously. That just isn't right. Dude, Edward Algier. Tyler Algier's brother, maybe? 93 overall halfback is our starter. 89 speed, 92 excel. McLean's an 89. Tejeda's an 88. Risner is an 88. He got a lot faster. Shaquille Spears is an 87. This team is looking nasty. Alani Cummings is an 86. And there's my stud, Eric Reinhardt, now has platinum tier step up and Bronze tier dot. He's got 99 agility? That is so random. He's got 96 medium, 87 short, and 85 deep. So he did get better, but this is kind of what I was worried about. You can't control what they upgrade in the offseason. So it looks like he got upgrades to elusiveness, power, accuracy, and IQ, which is good because his accuracies are better. Uh, he's an 87 overall right now at the start of his junior year. So he's going to be an unbelievable unit at the start of his senior year. Uh, Columbo's our best wide receiver now at 95. My other two wide receivers did grow graduate. So this could be a scary year for Reiner. Uh, Manu and Jimmy Cheeseman are my other wide receivers, so they will get better. Manu is gonna progress really well. This kid is only a freshman. 2032 schedule. We have FCS West and Kent State. Those are two. He's, why is Kent State playing Georgia? Okay, Clemson's gonna be a tough game. First in the nation. Tennessee, Texas, Alabama, Ole Miss, Florida, Auburn. Yeah. Big season here, boys. Damn. 2032 season, we go 9-3. and three. I was really hoping we have another shot at the SEC championship. Looks like we lost too many SEC games. It was Texas, Tennessee. Texas was six and two in the SEC. Damn. Oh my God. Why can we not beat Georgia Tech? Dude, if we beat Georgia Tech here, we go to the SEC championship. Georgia Tech fucking owns us. We have lost three times to Georgia Tech, at least. Dude, stop. Okay, we beat Kentucky. We got smacked by Auburn. Shit, we got smacked by Auburn. We dominated Florida. Smacked Ole Miss. Smacked Alabama. We are Oh, we lost to Texas and Texas in the SEC championship. Tough. So then we must have beat everyone else. We beat Mississippi State. We beat Tennessee. Oh, just short. Dude, if it wasn't for Georgia Tech, I think we might have already won a national championship. All right, let's look at the stats on this season. We will still get a bowl game. Uh, Eric Reiner, 3,400 yards, 279 for 450. 36 and three is nasty. And he's a 90 overall at the end of his junior year. Good Lord, he's a stud. Colombo just barely under 1,000 yards and 11. And touchdowns. I think we are right on the brink, gentlemen. Also, Algier is an absolute dog. 725 yards and 10 touchdowns. The problem is he's a senior, so we're about to lose him, unfortunately. Good thing George Yagoki. Come on. What kind of fucking name? Come on, bro. He's only a junior. He's an 84 overall, so he'll take over next season. And uh, defensively, look at this. 11 sacks out of Tejeda. 11 sacks out of McLean. A huge, huge duo. But damn, we're about to lose a lot of talent here, too. Oh, senior year for Reiner. It's got to be a monster or we're not going to be able to make it. 2033 season. I got to take this one serious. Dude, our players leaving is depressing. McLean, Colombo? No, I thought I... Oh, you're right. I don't have another season. Like Shit. Cummings, Tejeda, Risner, Algier at 94 overall. Oh, depression. All right, gentlemen, 2033. 
three. It's the senior season for Eric Reinhardt. Oh, he's such a dog. 91 overall. I honestly thought he might have more abilities by this point, but obviously he's still a stud. 99 awareness, 99 medium, 88 deep, 87 short, 82 speed, 82 excel. His accuracy is one point short of being maxed. Power is really not that close. He'll probably get an an accuracy upgrade next. He never got much faster throughout his career, but he is one of the best quarterbacks in the entire nation right now. In fact, I'm gonna look it up. He is quite literally the highest overall quarterback in the entire nation. Now, Jake Russo of Coastal Carolina is boosted to a 93, but his true overall is 88. Reinhardt is the only 90 plus overall quarterback in the entire nation, which is actually wild. We literally have the best quarterback in the nation now. We gotta do something with it. Ray Sean Pryor has developed insanely 99 speed, 96 XL corner with the platinum tier house call and gold tier blanket coverage. Hell yeah. George has progressed well at 90 speed, 91 XL power back. Offensive line is looking like studs. Uh, Lasco, best tight end of the year, is now an 85 overall as a senior. My only concern is my wide receivers. I just don't have the depth that you normally want, but Ron Booker, the freshman, is 99 speed, 95 XL. Oh my God, I gotta get in minute slot wide receiver. Oh my God. Wait a minute. I didn't do this could be an insane season. Now that we have a 99 overall wide receiver too, or 99 speed wide receiver. Apologies. Ron Booker, you are my starting slot wide receiver. No question. And he's also going to be wide receiver too. Wow. All right. We're going to play the moments against Clemson. That's a good team though. 91 overall. Looks like we're starting out on defense. Third and eight. Let's see what we're made of. Come on now. Come on now. Oh my God, we're not made of shit. We just got fried. What are you doing over there? We do get a third down alert though. I get to come in and take over. It is loud in this stadium though. I can't even see his button. Oh my God, not only that, but we just whiffed? It's Eric Reinhardt. What are we doing? Unlucky start to this game. Regardless, we've got seven points. They've got seven points. Yikes. Oh, Booker. The 99 speed demon is gonna make a big catch. The freshman. So come on, get up there. Snap it, snap it. He does get the snap off. Is this open? Oh, just overthrown. Could have been a pick. We're gonna have to score most every time we touch the football against Clemson. So let's make sure we can put something together here. Let's go inside zone. We got a stud power back an 88 overall. Maybe we'll run right through someone on Clemson here. Maybe we'll run right through someone on Clemson here. First and goal. Senior season, Reinhardt. We need you, buddy. Step up. Eric Reinhardt doesn't fumble, grabs three yards. Let's go right back to the power back. Oh, is this a pass? This is a pass, but we are going to the power back anyway. Not strong enough. Third and goal inside zone. Let me call it. Oh my God, it's a pass again. I thought that was a run. Dude, you can't even fucking properly audible. It's so annoying. Second and 20, we're finally back in. I'm gonna throw this wheel out. Yup. Hey. Third and six, let's get up to the line. I don't even think we can properly audible. Dude, it's so loud in here. I forgot how strong stadium pulse can be. There's a nice throw in too. Guess who? The freshman Booker. Uh, what is it trying to call here? Is it calling a run? Ooh, easy throw into Abel. He's not in the end zone. We just got to punch this in, boys. Nice and easy. First and goal. We just got to punch this in. Okay. Reinhardt scrambles. There's Booker, the freshman. The 99 speed, six foot four freshman. Booker is in. It is 17 to 17. Clemson scores. We're looking to do the exact same. Third and seven. Big conversion. They're gonna leave the best tight end of the year. Wide open. Honestly, I'm offended. First and 10, big play coming up. We're gonna roll out with Reinhardt and just try and pick up something. Get six yards on the ground. We'll take it. Now second and Four. And there's, there's Ugokio. I don't know how to say it, but a monster truck. Yo, flattens a Clemson safety. And that'll make this game 24 to 24. Got a big stop on third down. Come on, Georgia. We got to go to the natty this year, Georgia. I got to give you guys a nice start to this season. Third and six. What's Clemson got? There's a flag. Hopefully a holding. Big hit. Oh, gotta be a holding, right? Let's go. Third and 16. Slip screen for Clemson. I'm all over it. Fourth and 11. That'll be our ball back. All right, third and 11. This is a huge play right here on third and 11. Oh, is that open? It might not be. Could have been picked. It wasn't. I'm going for it. Fourth and 11. Oh my God, everyone's cold. No one can see shit. I'm going Booker. The freshman caught. Oh 
Oh my God, what a play. What a play. This crowd is stunned. It's first and 10. Oh, uh, that's not the route I thought you had. God, you can't even audible in this shit. Reiner, it's got room up the middle. Great downfield block. Oh, that was such a good block from that wide receiver. Okay, Reiner, it's gonna scramble again. Can he scramble for the touchdown? No! I thought he'd get open. Oh no, now we gotta make a stop. First and goal. First and goal. Risky pass caught. Holy shit. All right, Clemson scores. We have no timeouts, but there's a bit of clock. It's... Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding? You can't take EA out of the game, gentlemen. 31 to 24, lost to Clemson. They are the best team in the nation. It was a close game. I did throw a pick. My user play has not been great today. Deja vu, gentlemen. SEC championship against Oklahoma. End of the 2033 season went well. We're number two in the nation with two losses. Dude, I literally can't win the first game of the season to save my life, and then we just cook from there on out. It's actually really frustrating, though. I'm, like, low-key pissed. This is the weirdest dynasty I've ever done in my whole life. We have two losses this season. Two Clemson and two Bulls. Boise, oh my God, Boise State went nine and three. We lost to Boise State. We beat everybody else. We beat Texas, we beat Tennessee. My kryptonite, if I see Georgia Tech or Boise State in the playoffs, I'm gonna lose. Georgia hosting Oklahoma. It's a massive game, gentlemen. I will play the moments. Come on, Georgia. If Reinhardt's gonna get us a natty, we have to win this game to make the college football playoffs. Last season, same record, same team. Oklahoma, except we lost last time. Let's see if we can pull out on top for senior season. Season. We are playing just the moments. Oklahoma starts out with 13 points before I've even touched the football and I'm on defense. What on earth? It is 13 to zero first and goal, Oklahoma. My bad for playing the moments, I guess. Bop! Oh my goodness, QB just ate that hit. How did you eat that? This is not the Georgia I know and love. This is not the Georgia I know and love. There's a handoff. He breaks a tackle down to the one third and goal. It's gotta be another run, right? I'm bringing the DB off this side because he's gotta run this. It is, it is, it is! What a hit! They're going for a field goal. Could I get a moment, please? Like, could I play? Thank you. My goodness, it's 19 to fucking zero. The first time I touched the football. Jesus. It's an outside route for Booker. Nice catch. I'm gonna take the easy little wheel route here. Truck through one. Head first. Strong ability. Okay, wait a minute. 19 to seven and we're in the red zone? Turning this around. Backup tight end is gonna, is looking very open. He's looking very open. School, you bum. How do you drop that? Oh, that is a tough drop right there. Honestly, he's got to come down with that football. Get this one into our power back on third and two. And I think we go inside zone here. Third and two, big run play. Can we power it through? Touchdown, Georgia, 19 to 14. Step up, laser caught. That's the best tight end of the year, 2032. Don't forget that Booker's got 99 speed. If they're not going to Respect it! If they're not gonna respect it, we'll show them why they should. Yo, that freshman is a dog. Wait just a minute. 21 straight unanswered points, and don't tell me they're gonna let it happen again! Don Booker! Having a 99 speed guy changes everything, bro. It honestly does. Dude, we've got no way. Don't you dare let me do it again. Everybody's hot now. Everybody's hot. We're going into Booker. He's got the hot hand. Second and six. I don't think they're going to let me go over the top with him again. They shouldn't, and they're not going to. We're going to check this down in. Take the yards we can. There's Don Lasco. Got his man on the post and hangs onto that football. Dude, he came down with a hammer on that ball, but he still hung onto it. Kind of shocked he hung onto that. Put Lasco on a corner. See if that frees up. First and 10. Oh, it will. Because that's single coverage. Let's go! And I think there's a roughing the passer. No, it's a hold. Dog, they got a two in the holding call. The holding call is so common. I guess it is kind of in real life too. Maybe they don't need to tune it. First and 20. Looks like Booker is on the bench right now. He's just tired as shit, understandably. Second and 20. What do we got here, boys? We got a collapsing pocket. And that holding call was such a massive call. It's putting us in such a tough position here. We would have had points, no question. There's Lasko, did get out in front of his guy. We don't have a timeout. Wait, how do I spike it from here? I can't spike it from here. Fourth and 13, I have to go for the end zone now. What is this? 
That is such bullshit. That holding call fucked us so bad. Still though, we have the lead right now in Oklahoma by two scores, 28 to 19. And an opportunity to score again here. Booker is back in as well, third and seven. What do we got? I'm gonna go into the halfback. Can he fight? Oh my God, he fought. <laughs> Lucky animation, honestly. Now we're in the red zone. First and goal, let's start with a handoff. Good, good. Power back! What a truck, this guy's all free. Oh my God, I wish you had an easier name to pronounce. I got Oogie Oki. Fucking Oogie Oki up the middle. No, I've never seen Oogie Oki take a hit like that. Third and goal. I believe, I believe Oogie Oki. The Bulldogs are barking. It's 26 to 41. Third and two, big possession here. It's man coverage. Oh no. Luckily I was able to throw the ball away. It should be a big field goal. I don't know what happened there. 44 to 33. This is a weird score. Third and seven though. Booker is gonna free up, sit down and make a massive catch. Don Booker's having a huge game. Reiner with 400 yards and four touchdowns. He could make it five right here on second and four. If we can find the right man. Or he could scramble this in like a psycho. Reinert! Reinert! His fifth touchdown on the ground. And Oklahoma is going for it on fourth and 19. We can put this game away. I'm gonna drop into coverage with our edge rusher here. He's gonna lay one up! Randall! Spin! Was hoping to go a little harder there. That might have just sealed this ball game. Huge interception. Georgia finally over the hump and into the college football playoffs. This could be the season. SEC champions. We haven't seen that in nine years. Finally get to see it again. We're an A-plus championship contender. We're 11 and two. And who do we got in this first round? I hope it's not Clemson. Please don't be Clemson. Oh my God, hello. It's the first time I've ever seen this. Louisiana Tech's quarterback, Darren Fink, is the Heisman. I've never said for it. Louisiana Tech, by the way, is 13 and 0 right now. They are undefeated. Dante Lasco back to back. I have never gotten this award. I got it twice back to back. Dante Lasco wins it again. 824 and nine touchdowns. Dude, I love him. And our first playoff game is against Stanford. They're 10th in the nation, the All-State Sugar Bowl. Now, before we dive too deep, the senior season for 95 overall, Eric Ron. He's a 95, 3,600 yards, 38 touchdowns, six interceptions. What a career. Career, man. George Ugioki, 800 yards, 10 touchdowns. This guy was a beast. I loved him. 1,100 yards for Ron Booker, the 99 speed freshman, 14 touchdowns. Lasco, 824 and 9. And Manu Alualu, 808. Dude, what a season. 11 sacks out of Francisco, 10 out of Isaiah Carmona, and 10 out of Okiki. Five interceptions out of Afa Willie Hand, three out of Daniel Lombardo. All right, Georgia versus Stanford. The roster is rolling hot right now. Reinhardt has three silver tier abilities, platinum step up, and he's gotten himself up to a 95 overall. Looks like he must have, actually a 96. He did max out accuracy. He has virtually 99 in everything. 93 under pressure, 97 deep. Everything else is 99. 99 awareness, 99 agility, 91 break sack, 82 speed, 82 acceleration. I am so glad we got him, bro. So glad. Also, George Ugioki, head first downhill balance armbar. He's got so many abilities. All right, Stanford on the clock. I think I'm going to watch this one via sim. It's an 86 overall taking on an 86 overall. That is why we win the SEC championship. Getting that bye is huge. Let's play ball, gentlemen. It starts with the sugar bowl, gentlemen. I would love to slow this sim down, step in, and show you guys what's going on, but it is a bloodbath. There's cardinal blood everywhere. 38 to... Holy shit. Stop the bleeding. Oh my god. 59 to 21. Georgia just dominated Stanford. Under normal circumstances, I'd say that makes sense, but we have an 86 overall. So do they. Reinhardt just threw 177 yards and five touchdowns. He barely passed and he threw five touchdowns. The Sugar Bowl was an easy W for Georgia. I got to see how this went down. Reinhardt 16 for 27, three touchdowns through the air. Oh, wait a minute. He scrambled for two, didn't he? Oogie Oki went for one. Reinhardt scrambled for two. Tyler Contreras, the backup, went for one as 
as well. Alulu is our best receiver. Ron Booker also had a touchdown. Not much out of Dante Lasco. And defensively, two interceptions. Rayshon Pryor, the absolute freak show. One for Tyler Bolin and Rayshon Pryor with a pick six. I mean, realistically, we're not going to win playoff games that easily. The quarterfinals was a cakewalk. I don't see us doing that again. I guess it just depends, though. I mean, if we have Louisiana Tech here on this next game, it's, it's actually possible that we blow them out again. The last team I want to see is Clemson. I do not want to see Clemson. Rayshon Pryor, SEC Defensive Player of the Week for that pick six, of course. Eric Reiner with his five total touchdowns. Gets SEC Offensive Player of the Week. Oh my God, what did I just say? Now, Louisiana Tech, I've never seen this before, is the third best team in the nation. They have literally not lost a game. They are 14 and 0. I literally don't know what we're about to walk into here, but I need to scout this team because I've never seen something like this. Louisiana Tech is an 81 overall. They've got an 88 overall halfback. Dude looks like a stud. They got a 91 overall right end, which is some incredible recruiting and development for a team like Louisiana Tech, which is a three-star program. They got a great kicker. They got a lot of morale. They got an 88 speed. Oh, this is the this is the Heisman. We're taking on the Heisman. Darren Fink right here. 99 agility, 99 carrying, 99 ball carrier vision. I mean, it looks good. It doesn't look that good. Russ Wilbur, 97 speed wide receiver, 97 speed corner. I'm hoping we walk right through this team. And same thing, I'm gonna watch this game via sim. Hopefully it's a close one so that I can step in and watch some clutch moments. But hey, if, if you wanna cakewalk me right to the natty, I will not complain. If anyone ever gets Stanford first round and then Louisiana Tech the next round, please let me know. We're at Hard Rock Stadium. The Orange Bowl, baby, we got all the sugar. It's time to get the oranges. Let's see how this game looks. They've got the Heisman. It is zero to zero, now three to zero, three to three. Louisiana Tech came to play. Third and eight for Georgia. We're settling for a field goal if we can't convert this. There's Don Booker, the 99 speed, 6'4 freshman. And there's Zach Kennedy, the 91 overall stud on Louisiana Tech, forcing us out of field goal range. That's the worst case scenario right there. We're gonna pooch punt this puppy. And that's a dog shit punt too. I mean, Jesus, to the 22, are you serious? I could have done that. Yeah, Louisiana Tech, six to three now. Now six to 10, Georgia puts one up, 23 to 13. This is a close ball game, 26 to 20. Reiner, play action. Zach Kennedy, somebody block this man. That's his sixth tackle, his second sack that I've seen. He might have more. It's that or you gotta get the ball out quicker, Reiner. You are not fast enough to evade that man. There comes Zach Kennedy. Check down on third and 24, I'm gonna puke. There's nothing I hate more than seeing that. Start of the fourth quarter. Louisiana Tech's about to go 16 and 0, or they're gonna get their first loss of the entire season right now. Honestly, like a video that I've been trying to do is like a full undefeated season. And Louisiana Tech, the computer is about to do it right now with a three-star program. First and 10, they gash for 12 yards. They're switching up the formation. What do you got here, Louisiana Tech? First and 10, a design QB run. Going nowhere, second 11, Georgia's defense is all over it. Now he's under center. It's gonna be a little drop back or another handoff for Louisiana Tech. This running back has 19 carries right now. And those numbers keep adding up. There's his 20th carry. He breaks a tackle, but not the second one. Third and six, this could be a big stop right here. We could force a Hunt with a stop here. Come on, Georgia. We got two star edge rushers on either side. Maybe we can get a little pressure. It's a draw, but he's tackled big time. Louisiana Tech's gonna punt this football away. A Georgia field goal makes this a two possession game. Eric Reinert, George Ugioki taking over on the 21. There's a handoff. Ugioki run through him. Fights forward for additional yards. Second and two. A strong, slow drive will put Georgia in such good position. That was some of the worst vertical running I've ever seen. But hopefully it's strategic because now we're burning extra clock. One more handoff, Ugioki. It's gotta be, right? Third and one, motion that tight end back. It's a handoff, Ugioki. The power back! Slithers his way. That's an ugly, he has 13 carries for 134 yards. He is playing running back career mode right now. First and 10. I think we're just gonna run the ball to death. 100%. Motions the tight end over. There is no way you just got a delay of game on simulation. How did you do that? Delay a game against Georgia makes this first and 15. 26 to 20, there's a handoff. Oogie Yoki. I know I'm pronouncing that wrong and I don't care. Two minute warning comes up, but we don't have a two possession lead yet. So I don't think we should be taking our foot off the gas. I'm hoping this is a pass. On second and 11, it's another handoff. 
I do not like this very passive play calling right now. Third and eight. This is another run. I can't believe it. We're just going to concede this and then punt. Hand off to Ugioki. TFL, and we're just going to punt the ball away. And now if they march down and score, it's game. Incredibly shocked by that very beta play calling. That's a horrible snap. What the fuck? You just tackled my punter? First and 10. Louisiana Tech over the middle. Caught. Louisiana Tech has one timeout left, and they are knocking on the door of winning this game against Georgia. Laser caught. They're almost in the end zone. Why would you? Those were some of the worst play calls ever. Then we get tackled on the punt. First and goal. First and goal. Throws. Intercepted. Lombardo. Pick six. Daniel Lombardo. I don't even think that's Lombardo. That's our slot corner Valentine, right? It's neither of them. It's Alpha Woolly Hand with a 95 yard pick six. Holy shit. That was a crazy throw. That's not my husband, QB. Dude, what's crazy? Darren Fink threw only three interceptions the entire regular season. And he just threw a pick six in the biggest game of his life. As Georgia comes down with a two-point conversion as well, this game is all but over. And just like that, Louisiana Tech turns the ball over. A big special teams victory formation for Georgia. An Orange Bowl dub for the senior Reinhardt. And ladies and gentlemen, we are headed to the college football playoffs national championship. But I have a feeling that for the first dude player of the game, Oogie Oki, 140 yards, 16 attempts in a tutty. I gotta say though, boys, for the first time all season long, or for the first time in this playoff run, I think we're going to see a very legitimate team. I don't think we have the luxury of facing Louisiana Tech and Stanford. I think we're about to walk straight into Clemson. That's my fear. I can't believe it, but it was the defense. Not Eric Reiner, but the defense who saved us there. Semi-final playoff game winner. Awful woolly hand. I owe you a beer, my friend. We beat Louisiana Tech, giving them their first loss of the entire season, and we advanced to the national championship against... Come on. Who's it going to be? Come on. I know they got the awards. Who are we taking on? Oh no. Last time we played the Buckeyes, we got smacked. Ohio State's 12 and 3. We're 13 and 2. This is a crazy national championship. We're going to have to bring our A game. Here's the stats. Ohio State with the with more pass yards per game, more points per game. We have 20 more rush yards per game. Gentlemen, it's time for the national championship. We got to bring our A game. I'll tell you that. We didn't come this far to come this far. Let's set up Georgia nicely with an opening drive touchdown. And then I got to take my hands off the wheel and see if the sim logic can win us a natty against the Ohio State Buckeyes. Okie okay, on the opening drive. Take three yards. We got some stud offensive linemen up there now. I'm going to stick to the run game. This is how we beat Louisiana Tech. No reason I shouldn't stick with it. Third and four. Crazy. You don't trust the run, coach? I'm going to keep running this ball straight at them. Third and four. Ugioki. Ugioki. Hey, you saw it on the stats. Ohio State can throw the ball better than us, but we can run the ball better. As I say that, I am going to bring out my first pass play of the day. Ugioki is stuck in the middle of the field. I have no idea what just happened there. Second and nine. Boom! Hey, you never know with Booker, though. 99 speed Booker is always one quick play away from a Tuddy Reinhardt. He's still got 82 speed, gentlemen. The, a sneaky athletic. Oh, Booker press coverage. It's music to my ears. Let's put Lasko on a route, too, so that hopefully they don't stare right at Booker. Booker's got him beat! But the ball's just out. Second and 10. Reinhardt! Oh, you're not Reiner. You're Ugioki. And you're a monster. Dude, this guy's so good. I never expected him to be this good. I thought this was going to be a big regression from Algier, but clearly that's not the case. This dude's a stud. And there's our backup because Ugioki needs a breather, understandably. But he makes a nice catch. First and 10. I'm going to stay in the same formation because I really like how this looks. I could have hit Booker. I'm just gonna take the sack. I'm okay with that. Mesh double wheel here. I'm looking at I'm looking at the best tight end of the year. We got the best tight end of the year. Two years running. How am I not gonna throw it to him? This is how. I'm gonna run with Reiner and take eight yards. Last goes out. I'm third and five. I don't know what I like here. I like, I like! Oh! No! I thought that was open. He came out of nowhere. That ball had no zip on it. I kind of got hit when I threw. Not the Buckeyes intercepting me again. Buckeyes take over at the nine. I got to let the sim go. It is zero to zero. Georgia first to strike. Ohio State ties it up. Second and three. We're approaching the red zone with an all-tie national championship. This is a handoff. Dude, we are literally just pounding the rock. 
And there's another delay. Of oh, it's not a delay of game. It's a quick RPO. How did that work? Oh my God, Booker gets... There was a DB who had no clue he had the ball. I've never seen a play like that. It was almost a delay of game. That was one of the glitchiest things I've ever seen. But it puts Georgia on top, 14-7. to Oh my goodness. Also, we have a black lefty kicker. That's got to be on somebody's bingo card. Third and 12, Ohio State just made a massive play. First and 10, Ohio State looking to keep it up. There's a halfback draw. Body's on it. Nice work. Second and 10. What do we got here, gentlemen? There's a handoff to the running back. Damn gets pushed forward for a good amount. Third and three. They are in turbo. What's Ohio State want? Send a blitz, boys. They're running it. Send a blitz, boys. They're running it. Nope. I'm kidding. I'm lying. It was a prank. Throws? Oh my god. You did not catch that. What an unbelievable catch. Now first and ten. Ohio State fakes the handoff again, looking like a similar play. Steps up in the pocket, goes end zone! Intercepted! And who else? It's Rayshon Pryor. Rayshon Pryor, one of the best defensive players in the nation, comes up with an insane pick here against the Buckeyes. I can't believe he threw that football. I am such a fucking liar. I just be making shit up. That's Tyler Bolin. Tyler Bolin is our next best corner behind Alpha Woolyhead. I thought that was Rayshon Pryor, and uh, sue me. Regardless, it's 14 to 7. Georgia's got the ball, and you can bet your ass we are about to pull out a clinic of run plays and RPOs and drops. That is an easy catch. You got to depend on your guy for that. Now second and 10. Reiner drops back over the middle. I think that's a DPI. Yeah, he was just a little too on top of that. First and 10. Another RPO. Can we stop throwing these? These are horrifying. I don't know even how we caught that. Just hand the ball off to Oogie Yoki. Come on. It's the blackest white name ever. Oogie Yoki! He has struggled against this Buckeyes defense, but it's the national championship, ladies and gentlemen. We got to take this all the way home. Third and three, Reinert. Reiner, buddy, you've got a fat D-tackle running straight at you. Either throw it away or find somebody. How are you just going to stare down a sack like that? Fourth and 12. We got a punt here, ladies and gentlemen. At least it didn't get uh, tackled. Ohio State's going to have good field position on this if they don't house it. Damn. They're going to start at the 50. Ohio State quick pass underneath. For eight yards and that should be the quarter it's not gonna be the quarter they're gonna really try and get this honestly not how i expected the game to go we have the similar rushing yards we're just actually passing better than ohio state right now there's a handoff ohio state we do not have people ready they'll get tackled after five they're approaching the red zone this could tie the ball game up first and ten Areza, the lefty QB, busted coverage. Tyler Bolin had the interception earlier, a huge play, but this time Tyler Bolin is torched by number nine Redmond. Touchdown Ohio State and a PAT away from tying up the national championship 14 to 14. Come on, Reiner, Booker, Ugioki. Dude, we can't run against Ohio State. Second and nine, we got a single yard there. We got to use the Speed Demon Booker. We got to find something crazy here. Second and nine, it's another handoff, this time to the backup. I swear they're looking for linebackers to run into. Third and six, please pass the football. Oh my God, it's an RPO thrown. Caught. Oh my God, what a monster catch. That was blanketed too. I cannot believe he caught that. Jet touch pass. It's zone fake jet. Honestly, I wanted to see what happened if Booker had a jet touch pass there, but the zone fake jet was quite effective. Ugioki going for four. Now second and six. I expect another run play. There it is. Ugioki's got a hole. Third and two. We're getting four yards per carry. Ohio State's defense has just got to be so worn out of this shit, man. Third and two. I'd be sick. There's another handoff, but they stuff the box this time and in classic georgia fashion we are now gonna put the ball away again no way we no way we fake it right it's a hell of a punt though we need some good coverage all right decent now it's scary gentlemen three minutes and 13 seconds ohio state with the football it's 14 to 14 they hand this one off second and seven i don't know i honestly i think a part of the problem with this rebuild georgia's uh pl offensive playbook is very shallow they call some, some way too standard of play call third and two now 14 to 14 this is a big big run and it's stuff it's fourth and two we're getting this ball back georgia's defense time and time again comes up with crucial plays that is a fucking monster punt. Wow, he flipped the field. It's a huge punt. Dude, I'm honestly, if we go three and out with three run plays, I'm going to be so disappointed in this team. We got to call some serious plays here, gentlemen. There's one handoff. 
that's going to gain two yards only because Ugioki is a monster. That should have been a TFL. Please do not call inside zone. They called inside zone. Oh, it's read option. But Reiner keeps it. That was not even the right read. Please throw the football. You're the best quarterback in college football. We've got the Heisman here, gentlemen. The basically Heisman. Pass. Yes. Third and six. What are you doing? What are you fucking doing? They have five sacks. We have zero. I'm getting pissed. Now we're punting from so deep that they're damn near in scoring range just by fielding it. I think we just lost this game. I think Ohio State could damn near chew the clock and kick a field goal. 14 to 14. Quick throw, broken up. I mean, if we got to depend on a pick six, then I, I don't think we deserve to win. Offense has got to be able to put up points. Second and 10. The exact same throw, but this time it's caught. Now third and five. They're in no huddle. I'm shocked. They could have ran the ball. I'm shocked at what's going on here. Third and five. No huddle for Ohio State. Drops back. Pressure on! Sacked! Timeout, Ohio State. Do they punt this? It is a defensive national championship. The edge pressure, finally. That's Georgia's first sack of the game. And I swear to God, Georgia, if we come out here and run this football 18 times, that's a dot. That is a dot of a punt. What? Oh, never mind. Take it back. Ignore my scream. I thought they hit the football somehow. There we go! We're passing the football! I repeat, we're passing the football! First and ten! This could be it, gentlemen. This is how we're gonna win the national championship. Reiner, another laser to the best tight end in the league, Dante Lasco. That wasn't even Lasco, but whatever. Second and two. We are passing the football. The best quarterback! in college delivers to the 48 georgia's knocking on the door is anybody home no huddle georgia reiner we're still passing <gasps> that was almost a pick now you're scaring me reiner second and ten clean pocket surveys throws caught caught don booker down the sideline we're on the seven with 36 seconds left now we bring in ugioki we could chew this clock and kick a field goal we could punch this in with a touchdown. Second and goal. No turnovers. Backup halfback is in. This has got to be another handoff. It is. He's got a lane. Ohio State Buckeyes linebackers. These guys are legit. Ohio State let us run the clock down to eight seconds. And on third and goal, the biggest kick of his life. He drills it. Holy shit. We are three seconds away from a national championship. Hold, Georgia. I've seen crazier. Ohio State's got one play left. Areza. Steps up, unloads. It's a big load. Georgia is national champions. Game winning kick. I never thought I'd see the day that black lefty kicker would be the MVP for Georgia in the national championship. When coach decided to pass the ball, we smoked them. But damn, what a national championship. 17 to 14, so many clutch defensive stops back to back to back. And we just barely come out on top of the Buckeyes. What a game. They give player of the game to Reiner. I don't know, man. Game winning kick. Reiner threw uh, some questionable footballs. I want to give it to the kicker. Areza threw some lasers too, dude. That was an awesome game. Take a look at our stats for the natty. Reiner, 20 for 30, two touchdowns and an interception. Ugioki was really ineffective. Three yards per carry he sucked if i'm being honest alualu was so clutch caught some really tough balls and ron booker only saw like only saw three catches but for 90 yards and a touchdown he is a beast and the biggest play of the game tyler bullen's interception was massive also had an interception out of daniel lombardo national champions it only took two states worth of recording but we're national champions after tanking the bulldogs all right full season stats for eric reiner 4,200 yards, 46 touchdowns. Is that a record? Because we didn't have any records before. Dude, these SEC records are insane. Joe Burrow threw 5,600 yards. Derrick Henry had 2,200. Like, oh my God. Even in the video game, I can't compete with this. I mean, I could have literally, but it would be tough. Although we do at least have some true just Georgia records. So Georgia's career passing leader, Eric Reiner, career Receiving yards, Ray Colombo, we remember him. Reiner also has passing touchdowns. Not bad. 160 is a lot. Eric Reiner also has the season record for Georgia's passing yards. Ron Booker, oh my God, as a freshman, has Georgia's receiving and reception yards record. Oh my God. The only sad thing, and touchdown catches, the only sad thing is Ron Booker no longer has Reinhardt after this year. Single game records, we have uh, Ray Colombo with receiving yards and Kerry Elias with passing touchdowns. 
We also have Ray Colombo with touchdown catches. And some legendary uh, receivers. All right, gentlemen, after winning the national championship, we've got to sim one full season on autopilot to see if we put this team in the right position to repeat. Let's see what happens. Okay, six. Oh, we're dog shit. We went five and seven. Now, keep in mind, we did lose Reinert, who was the best quarterback in the nation. And I don't think I really developed anybody else. We're a higher overall. We're an 88. Ron Booker is a 92 overall as a sophomore. The best player on this team is Ron Booker. I don't know that I've ever seen this before. Ron Booker is a, he's 6'4 with elite dev trait. Oh my God, this guy's unbelievable. He doesn't even have quickness maxed out. He has 99 speed. He still could get three in power, one in IQ and one in route running. This guy's a freak. Why did we suck so bad though? A starting quarterback is a scrambler. That's never good for Georgia. He's mediocre. We lost our halfback. We just lost a lot of talent. But dude, okay, honestly at this point, Ron Booker is the greatest wide receiver prospect I've ever seen. So I'm going to sim another season because I want to see what happens to him. The Natty Chip is uh, Michigan Cincinnati. We at least have a winning record this time around. We really fell off after losing Reiner though. I'm not going to lie. Ron Booker's now a 94 overall with two gold tier abilities. Didn't get a huge overall boost, but he's still cooking. Team's certainly getting better. And our quarterback situation still kind of sucks. Yeah, dude. Reiner was like a generational prospect. So is Ron Booker though. All right, let's sim one more season. I I want to see what he looks like in his senior season. All right, back-to-back -back winning seasons, but without Eric Reiner and my intervention on games, it doesn't look like we're really that good of a team. But where did Ron Booker go? Oh no, we lost Ron Booker for sure. Oh yeah, we lost him. Okay, we gotta go check the whole net. I, I have to assume he's probably a top five wide receiver in the entire nation. That's what happens when you go seven and six though. You can't retain the best player in the nation. He's gonna hit the portal. Dude, where did Buddy go? He was only a junior. Did he declare for the NFL as a junior? Oh, that's so sad. He declared for the NFL as a junior. Oh, no. We'll never know what would have happened his senior year. That's depressing. I'm not even gonna lie. That's depressing. Okay, gentlemen. Banger video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I've been slacking on the rebuilds, and I'm sad about that. I gotta lock back in and crank these boys out. Let me know what you want to see next. I'm so excited to do more, and I'll talk to you boys soon. Peace!